Oh, here we go. Let's count down for sync. Four, three, two, one, and we're off. We're playing this one on um, Neo Medusa 2.2. Um, so we're not going to see any sort of map imbalances because it's Terran versus Terran Mirror. We have um, Boxer in red at the 2 o'clock position and Toss Girl in purple at the 10. There you have it. And uh, we're really seeing, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about Toss Girl in, in, that, uh, in that intro. But I mean, let's uh, we can spend a little bit of time talking about Boxer. Just what he's been able to do in this tournament, which is basically just eliminate everybody who's uh, stepped up to the yeah, and Boxer has done it in a pretty impressive fashion. Usually, um, when people say Boxer is um, a fantastic player, they say that you know he's a fantastic strategist and his micromanagement is pretty top notch. But a lot of a lot of people say, yeah, I love Boxer, but his um, his macro has left something to be desired. Nuclear launch detected says that sign being held by someone wearing a savior mask. <laughs> Holy crap, these fans are really getting into this. I love it. Um, yeah, but Boxer's, um, Boxer's macro has um, has been looking really good. I dare say possibly the best it's ever been um, from, from the games that we've seen from him in this tournament. So um, we might, and I hope so anyway, be seeing a Boxer resurgence. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people are looking for that uh, to happen. You know, I mean, so many people are, are just really looking forward to him being able to, to rise again to the level of play that we've come to expect from him. Um, in the meantime, it looks like actually Boxer is in the process of walling in, um, whereas Tosco has opted not to do so. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out in terms of, of scouting and, and things of that nature as we advance into this game. Um, but yeah, Boxer just has it. I agree, actually. I think that you know his macro has looked extremely solid in this game. Or excuse me, that was Toss Girl that's uh, been walling in as opposed to Boxer. Boxer opted not to do so. Yeah, um, Boxer. He's he's a sentimental favorite of so many um, of so many StarCraft fans, myself included, and everyone wants to see that resurgence from him. Um, and you know, we. We saw Boxer's play deteriorate a little bit during the later time that he was spending in Air Force Ace, but now that he's out of the Air Force and back with Ace, SKT-1 and practicing with some of the best players around, um, you know, without the distraction of military duties, I think it's only natural that we see his play improve, and the only question is really going to be how much. I agree, and I mean, you had some ridiculous here in mind at SKT-1. Um, that, that, that's just a ridiculous thing that we try to DC players. Um, and then, you know, you have the, the players in the other races where you have the DC there, you know, in, in there as well. I mean, it's totally a fantasy. Um, there's just a lot of, of solid Kanata. I mean, there's just really solid players at SKT1 um, to play against, and that it really has provided the ideal situation for him uh, to really come back into truth. Yeah, the only um, yeah the only weakness on SKT1 is that their Zerg line is still... Um, Pretty weak for the moment, though um, the Zerg has been showing some signs of improvement, and um, you know Hyuk does get his um, his upset wins every now and again, just shocking everyone. <laughs> and was that a starport going up for Boxer there? I think it might have been actually. I did not catch that though long enough. They observe it. We're in the first person view, and it is all over the place, right? Of course, we should expect no less from any pro gamer. That is a starport for Boxer outside of his base, no less, um, over at that um, one o'clock position. So, Boxer's looking to do something sneaky, and Toss Girl's going for two ports oh, of her own. Two <laughs> this is gonna be sick. This is gonna be really interesting. Um, I I do not know how this is gonna play out at all. So we have a hidden starport really for Boxer. I I have. I'm pretty confident that, that Tosco has not scouted that in any way, shape, or form. And at the same time, it looks like Tosco is in the process of going for a Lita-esque two-port race. Only against Terran, which you can do. Um, there's no question you can do it, but it's not nearly as common as to see it against Zerg, where it's just, um, you know, an yeah, old-school build with such with such pedigree and coolness to it. It looks like actually Doug Boxer is going to go ahead and press his advantage at the, at the front gate. Um, it looks like he's got just a few more units on the field right now and is going to go ahead and, and try and affect some damage to this wall. And 
uh, maybe distract Toss Girl from the, trying to take any type of uh, initiative in, in, in finding the starport that we've managed to produce. But that first Wraith is out, and the, the, we're going to see uh, how much damage she can affect because it's obviously not particularly strong against the ground unit. I don't know if um, I don't know if revealing the wraiths was the um, was the best move that Toss Girl could have made there. Now Boxer is going to know that there are two starports um, that there are two starports in Toss Girl's base, and he's going to be able to start to react. He's getting an engineering bay, comsat stations. Um, yep. So Boxer might be in a position to defend this, but Toss Girl's wraiths are already in the base doing some damage. So um, yeah, the timing here is going to be pretty critical. Yeah, it really is, and I mean, if she can do uh, some economic harassment as well as keep these SCVs uh, from from building the uh, the necessary structures that, to get the defenses up, this could be a lot more damaging than, uh, than a lot of us would like it. To be. And it looks like she was also yeah. put in the process of putting up a control tower at her base to, to probably upgrade cloak. Yeah, Boxer has oh, cloak Boxer already, has and and they oh. trade they trade a wraith each but um toss girl still got one wraith um in the base and um probably another two coming there's the first yeah and i honestly uh, but the engineering bay is completed so we're going to start seeing some turrets in the uranium also boxer's got cloak toss girl doesn't and toss girl um yeah. had used up her one scan so she loses two of her wraiths to the one cloaked one of boxer so Boxer's been able to minimize the damage at the very least, and he's got the armory going up so you can get some Goliaths on the ground. Yep, and I, I think that's honestly going to be a huge uh, factor in neutralizing that uh, two-port rate strategy. It looks like he's also taking the time to build the command center, so he's going to go ahead and expand at this point as well. Um, I, I really do think that uh, at this point that the revealing of that uh, of the race so early on um, to try and protect that front door was is coming into play. I think you were absolutely right that that revealing um, the race that early really allowed Boxer to you know the, the little insight that he needed um, to get the necessary defenses up and in place and then you know to really kind of solidify his own threat. 